pleasant morning. Birds are chirping and the wind is cool and calm. Shubhangi, with her family, is having tea and breakfast in their garden. Devangi, Shubhangi's sister Mitra's friend, has come to stay for a couple of days. Devangi is a student of second year zoology in MS University, Vadodara. Shubhangi, fascinated by the call of a bird, exclaims, What a beautiful sparrow it is! Devangi promptly corrects her. My dear, it is not a sparrow. It is a tailor bird. See its color is yellowish green and it is smaller than a sparrow. You are right. But the day before yesterday when I saw it, its color was rust. Look Shubhu, this one is a male and the rust was a female. Why is it so? I have observed the female in almost all the species is dull in comparison with the male. It seems that you have keen interest in birds. Oh yes, Didi. See, Mitra Didi is always busy with her projects. Will you please tell me more about birds? It is my interest and not Mitra's. I will be happy to talk about birds. Mitra, will you please bring a book from my bag titled Birds of India by Salim Ali? Why not? Sure. Kids, enjoy your discussion. We have to leave now. Listen Shubhangi, there are jungle birds, water birds and birds that live near human habitats. This tailor bird is a bird of our surrounding. It stitches its nest with green leaves and fibers of trees. That's why it is called a tailor bird. That's great! But why do the female and the male have different colors? We have the same color. Oi Chalbul! There are two major types of birds. Birds of prey and small birds. Birds of prey hunt small birds for food. The female bird should be dull to hide itself from hunters as it is supposed to continue generations. Wonderful! What a design of nature! Devangi, here is your book. It has very interesting information about birds. Birding is my passion, Mitra. Look, Shubhangi, here is a picture of a tailor bird's nest. Wow! It's cool! Let's talk about another interesting bird. Look, this is Indian Grey Hornbill. This bird is common in Indian subcontinent. It has grey feathers all over the body with light grey and dull belly. Yum, baby! Where does it live? Its habitat is both in wild as well as urban areas, especially large trees. Its beak is quite strange, isn't it? Yes, dear. Its beak or bill has an extra portion like a horn and that's why it is called hornbill. One more interesting thing is that it nests in hollows of tall trees. The female enters the nest hollow and seals it by using mud pellets supplied by the male. The male takes care of the female and its newborn chicks. It supplies food to the mother and chicks. What a caring dude! Such a difficult task to feed the whole family. For the whole day it has to collect food. For its caring behavior for female, it is called Vahu Ghelo in some areas of our state meaning the one who takes extra care of his wife. Wow! That is great! My teacher also says that we should be helpful to others. May I ask one more question? Sure, dear. When I visited my friend Nazneen's home in the Polo Forest, I saw many nests of weaver birds on the pool trees. So beautiful! 
How do they build their nests? Look at this picture in the book. It is a weaver bird. The bird is known as Sugari in Gujarati, meaning one who builds beautiful house. The Almighty has gifted us different skills and the weaver bird is gifted with the skill of weaving its nests. Weaver birds prefer long thread-like grass leaves to build their nests. Phoebe, who builds a nest, the male bird or the female bird? Male weaver birds build nests. It takes nearly 18 days to complete nest building. When the nest is half completed, the male invites female for pairing by its song. If she accepts the nest, both of them finish the nest. If she doesn't, the nest is abandoned. Then it must be very difficult for the male to build more than one nest. Yes, absolutely right. A male often makes many nests during nesting season. Poor boy! I remember, Didi. I saw some incomplete nests also. Shivangi, the birds are not only our friends, but they also help us in many ways. You know the vulture? Generally, people do not like vultures as they eat carcasses or dead animals. But they are called scavengers as they clean our surroundings by eating the rotten dead bodies. Observe its beak in the picture. It is designed to tear the flesh from dead bodies. Yes, the curve of the beak is very sharp. Didi, I have not seen any vultures soaring in the sky for last so many months. What is the reason? At present, people use medicine to cure sick cattle. When that cattle dies, vulture eats its body. Diclofenic is very harmful for the vulture. After eating such flesh, it slowly dies within a few days. Nearly 97% of vulture population is lost. It simply means that we, the human beings, are very selfish. We do not care for other living beings on the earth. Why are we not doing anything to save the birds? How can we help the birds? You can offer grains and water to the birds. Nowadays, we get to see very few sparrows, right? Where have they gone? Uh, they have perhaps gone to their mama's home for vacation. What about the other days? I don't know. Will you please explain? They have left us because we have destroyed their homes. How? I haven't done that mischief. No, sweetheart. Actually, we have designed our houses in such a way that the birds cannot enter into the house. We do not allow them to nest in our premises. They feel safe living with us. That's why we call them the house sparrow. Well, I want them back. And I'm sure my friends will also help me. Okay. You can prepare sparrow nests with the help of cardboard boxes. Do not feed birds gartias as it is very harmful to their stomach. Put some grains like rice, millet etc. and water in a dish. They will surely come to play with you. Then you and your friends can sing a song. Chakki ben, chakki ben, mari saate ramba aushu ke nai. One more question, baby. Oh, sure. Please tell me about migratory birds. Well, Shubhu, every year we have thousands of birds as our guests from Europe, Siberia and other cold countries. Birds like pelicans, cranes, various ducks and rosy pastors travel thousands of kilometers to fly to India. Rosy Pasta? This name sounds sweet. What is that? It is a bird like our mena. Rosy Pasta is Bayu in Gujarati. Its color is dull brown and 
much pink. It is the same one I see during winter, flying in the flock. Good observation. This bird arrives in India in June or July from Europe and returns in March or April. How do they travel without any map? They take help of the sun to find their way. While they come, they travel in the early morning and during return migration, they fly in the evening. Do they all use the same pattern for migration? Of course not. Migratory birds fly in different patterns. Birds like cranes, ducks and geese fly in a formation of V-shape. Certain ducks, warblers and flycatchers travel in groups. Oh God! How can I remember all the details? That's easy. Remember these steps while birding. 1. See the color of the bird. 2. Observe its size. 3. Notice the shape and length of the bill and tail. 4. Place of sight like perched on a tree or wire, in water body, open ground, grassland or sky. Apart from these tips, you can give your close friend's name to that bird whose nature or any characteristic matches with the friend. That's true. Thank you, Didi, for introducing me to the colorful world of birds. Yes, my brain fever bird. What is that? A bird like Shubhangi. Shubhu, search about this bird. Remember Shubhu, we need birds on the earth as they eat up insects harmful to our crops. They are also helpful in spreading of seeds. They entertain us with their sweet calls. Take care of birds. They are the true indicators of a healthy environment. Thank you, Didi.